So in this video, we will be discussing about the spleen. We will discuss the location, axis, external features, relation, blood supply, lymphatic drainage, and the nervous supply of the spleen here. First of all, we will discuss about the location of the spleen. So location of the spleen. So we know that the abdomen is divided into quadrants like this. So the spleen is located in such a way that it lies in the left hypochondrium and a part of it lies in the epigastrium also. So this one is the left hypochondrium and this one is the epigastrium. So that is the location of the spleen. Now it is wedge shaped or it is tetrahedral in shape. So let's see the position. This is the left dome of diaphragm and there is this is the fundus of the stomach so this is left dome of diaphragm so this is the fundus of stomach so the spleen is wedged between the fundus of the stomach and the left dome of diaphragm so the spleen is wedged between the fundus of stomach and the left dome of diaphragm like this now look at this it's a very different so this is the vertebrae we can see the ribs here So this is the ninth rib. This is the ninth rib. This is the tenth rib, and this is the eleventh rib. And the spleen is related to the ninth, tenth, and the eleventh rib. Ninth to eleventh rib. So it is related. That is all about the location. Now we will describe the axis or position by axis of the spleen. Position and axis. So we have seen that so we have seen that the spleen is related to the 9 to 11th ribs like this so the spleen is directed look at this it is directed downwards forwards and laterally along the axis of which rib that is the 10th rib so the spleen is directed downwards forwards and laterally along the axis of 10th rib that is very important the axis of the spleen is same as the axis of 10th rib so and we know that look at the 10th rib here sorry 10th rib makes an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal so the spleen is also making an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal because its axis is same as that of the axis of the 10th rib. So it makes an angle of 45 degree with horizontal. Now let's have a look at the size of the spleen. The size of the spleen is variable. On an average, we look at the size. 
Вот, this is the spleen. So, the length is approximately 5 inches. And the breadth is approximately 3 inches. And, uh, sorry, the thickness of the spleen is 1 inches. So, 5, 3 and 1. Easy to remember and these are odd numbers. That is consecutive odd numbers. 5, 3 and 1. 5 is the length, 3 is the breadth and 1 is the thickness. So, what is the approximate weight? Weight is approximately 7 ounces in weight. So, that is all about the position axis and the size of this plane. Now, we will dis discuss about the external features of the plane. External features. So let's have a look at the spleen here. So if you are looking at this plane, you can see that it has got a superior border. This one is a superior border, superior border of the plane, and this one is the this one is the this is the superior, and this one is the inferior border. And in between this, you can see an intermediate border also, intermediate border which is directed towards the right side, intermediate border. So these are the borders. So borders, first one is borders. Borders are first one superior border, intermediate border and an inferior border. So the peculiar feature of the superior border is that near the anterior end it has got a notch that is the splenic notch that notch is very important that is superior border is wearing a notch on its anterior end so that's all about the borders now it has got two ends here two ends are, this is the anterior this one is the anterior end which is slightly expanded one so this is the anterior end and this one is the posterior end. So anterior end is an expanded one. It looks just like a border. And this is directed downwards, forwards and reaches the mid axillary line. That is the anterior border. So the posterior border, it is rounded and it is directed upwards, backwards and medially. And it is resting on the upper pole of the left kidney. So the two ends ends are first one anterior end which is directed downwards forwards and reaches the mid axillary line second one is posterior end which is sitting on the upper pole of left kidney rest on upper pole of left kidney and we have two surfaces here two surfaces you can see that there is a visceral surface posterior to that we have a diaphragmatic surface which is resting on the diaphragm so the two surfaces what we see here is the visceral surface this is the visceral one and posterior to that we have the diaphragmatic surface so third one is surfaces. So surfaces are visceral surface which is concave and rough and the diaphragmatic surface.
which is convex and smooth. Now we will discuss the surfaces. That is, I can see if others clean. So, what you see here is the visceral surface. So, what are the relations of the visceral surface? On the visceral surface, as it is related to some viscera, it forms the viscera forms some impressions on the spleen on the visceral surface of the spleen you can see impressions of some organs what are the impressions so now let's look at the organs which are related here we have seen that the fundus of the stomach is sitting like this so the fundus is like this now so it is related to the fundus at this region we have the fundus of the stomach now on this spleen we have the anterior surface of the left kidney resting in the spleen is like this in the spleen and here surface of the left kidney makes an impression here Then try the spleen again. You can see the splenic flexure of the colon making an impression here. This is the splenic flexure of the colon. So, splenic flexure of colon making an impression here. Now, on the hilum, this is the hilum. On the hilum, you can see the tail of the pancreas making an impression so tail of the pancreas making an impression here so which are the impressions you see here if you draw the spleen like this between the superior border and the, this is the intermediate border between the superior border and the intermediate border we see the impression formed by the fundus of the stomach so here you can see an impression of the fundus of stomach that is formed by fundus of stomach and it is the largest and the most concave impression on the uh, spleen largest and most concave impression on this so and you can see the renal impression between the uh, intermediate border and the inferior border you can see the impression which is formed by the anterior surface of the left kidney so the renal impression of the left kidney lies between the intermediate and inferior border like this this is the impression formed by the left kidney. So, and there is a colic impression which is formed by the splenic flexure of the colon. It occupies a triangular area adjoining the anterior end of the spleen. So, 
uh, adjoining the anterior end of the spleen there is colic impression colonic impression colonic impression so between the colonic impression and the hilum we have the pancreatic impression it, it lies between the hilum and the colonic impression that is pancreatic impression so pancreatic impression so these are the impressions present on the visceral surface of the spleen so these also forms the visceral relations of the spleen that is the fundus of stomach pan tail of pancreas and left kidney and the splenic fascia of the colon so we will be discussing about the relations of the spleen talking about the relation we first discuss the peritoneal relations we'll do the spleen here So in order the spleen is related to the fundus of the stomach. So and between the there is a peritoneum which is peritoneum pole which is extending from the hilum of the spleen towards the fundus of the stomach. That peritoneum fold is known. Sorry, uh, that is a peritoneum fold extending from the hilum of the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach that peritoneal fold is known as the gastrosplenic gastrosplenic ligament and through this ligament which artery passes that is the short gastric artery and some lymphatic and sympathetic nerves passes through this ligament short gastric artery that is from the hilum of the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach hilum of spleen to greater curvature of stomach and we can see the So and uh, between the kidney and the spleen there is another ligament which is from the hilum of the spleen to the anterior surface of the left kidney we have a ligament which is known as lino-renal ligament. This is called lino-renal ligament. It is important because through this an artery that is splenic artery and tail of pancreas is present in this ligament that is splenic artery and tail of pancreas and tail of pancreas is located here splenic artery and tail of pancreas now another ligament which is present here we can see the left dome of the diaphragm here and there is the splenic fascia of the colon which is related to visceral surface of the spleen and there is one ligament which is not attached to the spleen and but it forms a relation anterior relation of the spleen that is extending from the 
left dome of diaphragm to the colon that is called phrenicocolic ligament phrenicocolic ligament phrenicocolic ligament so that is not attached to the spleen but it forms the anterior relation of the spleen it prevents the downward uh, displacement of the spleen so it is because of this present presence of these ligament in splenomegaly the spleen is not di directed downwards and laterally but instead it is directed downwards and medially to the right iliac fossa so that is the phrenicocolic ligament and about the visceral relations we have already discussed about the visceral relation that is it is There is a left kidney. Mm, we know that the posterior end of the spleen is resting on the upper pole of the left kidney. So, <coughs> left kidney forms an impression on the visceral surface of the spleen. There is the splenic flexure here and the fundus of the stomach. Here. And you have the tail of pancreas. So, which are the structures which forms a visceral relation? That is fundus of stomach, tail of pancreas. Anterior surface of left kidney, and what splenic flexure of colon. So the splenic flexure of colon. So all these structures will form the. visceral relations so all these ligaments will form the peritoneal relation of the spleen so that is all about the relations of the spleen and about the blood supply blood supply and that is the artery which is supplying the spleen as the splenic artery splenic artery which is the branch of celiac trunk celiac trunk which is supplying the spleen and the venous drainage this is the arterial supply and the venous drainage is by the splenic vein and the splenic vein joins with the superior mesenteric vein in the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein so this combines with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein so that's all about the blood supply and about the lymphatic drainage actually the splenic tissue pro proper has no lymphatics there are few lymphatics which are arising from the connective tissue of the capsule and the trabecula and this will drain into that is Lymphatics arising from the connective tissue of the capsule will drain into the pancreatic splenic lymph nodes situated along the splenic artery. And the nerve supply is so it is supplied by the sympathetic fibers which are derived from the celiac plexus. Sympathetic fibers derived from celiac plexus. They also supply some smooth muscles present in the capsule, and these are vasomotor in nature. Vasomotor in nature. 
so that is all about this playing thank you for watching this video to see more videos from my channel please subscribe to our channel thank you